I was asked to do um, work on the opera, work on Rosalka, by um, David Pickard. He'd come to see um, Corn Boy, and he felt that it was um, suitably operatic, I think. <laughs> he, maybe he saw an, op uh, an opera, opera director in the making, I don't know, but he, he um, asked me if I'd like to come and do something at Glyndebourne. Not specifically Rosalka, but something. And we talked about um, different operas, and Rosalka came up as something he, he would like to um, programme. Well, I didn't want to interpret the story, I wanted it to just live and for people to make up their own minds really and make it as vivid as possible, the, sort of the, the, the classic fairy tale, see what people make of it. Um, which meant setting it in um, a location that could allow people's imaginations to really delve quite deeply into the forest or into the lake without saying, here's a lake, here's a forest, in a very literal way. We're just going to run to the point where Vodnik comes in and then we're just going to break it down, OK? I mean, we'll keep going. If we need to stop, that's fine, once Vodnik's in. But otherwise, let's just run it through. OK. Standing by. Thank you. Brilliant. Brilliant. Traditionally, there are three wood nymphs in Rosalka, but we have several. We have ten. <laughs> ten wood nymphs. Um, three singing, three principals singing. <laughs> wanted to uh, frequent the forest, actually create a sort of, create the life of the forest by um, working with um, an ensemble group. I mean these are the choristers but they're fantastic performers, um, they certainly steep themselves, they certainly inhabit the wood and the trees um, and it really gives life to, the, to the, those particular scenes. <laughs> Rosalka feels sometimes fathomless and uh, sometimes tiny and we needed to find a way of um, allowing all its, um, all its different sizes, <laughs> if you like. And uh, you know, sometimes you can imagine the prince swimming on the surface of the lake and sometimes you can imagine him and Rosalka deep inside the lake and we needed to find ways of achieving that. And one ways we've uh, explored swimming in the water is really thinking of ways of defying gravity really. There are times when the audience um, view the lake or view the swimming as if they're perhaps the only thing I can think of is if you're in an aquarium and you're sort of almost seeing a cross section. Um, so the, the Rizalki, the water nymphs are flying. At other times when they're just moving around the stage we use dancers. <laughs> Okay, good, good. Stop, 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 stop. Good, good, good. Okay, so, so you need time to work out what you do with Liz, yeah? I, I don't come into rehearsal room and say, you go there, you go there, and it's just about the blocking and then sing. It's just, it's just, each person has to really shape and craft and uh, whittle away at their character. And every moment um, we have to craft. You know, there's a lot of uh, incredibly complicated um, technical work in the dancing and they they are on stage a lot of the time and of course these are six dancers are working with non-dancers who are actually singing at the same time so there's a lot there's a lot to think about and, and do <laughs> Stop, 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 good, thank you. It's been a challenge, but actually this is the end of the fourth week and, um, you know, we're, it's in good shape, really good shape, I think. <laughs>